Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. Chapter 1. Pencils, Erasers, and Disqualifications, Part 2. It had been a strange business indeed, and Rainy had suspicion it was to grow stranger still. When the distant church bell struck the quarter hour, Rainy finished his sandwich and rose from the park bench. If the doors on the monk building weren't open by now, he would try to find another way in. At this point, it would hardly surprise him to discover he must enter the building through a basement window. As he mounted the steps to the monk building, broad front plaza, Rainy saw two girls well ahead of him, walking together toward the front doors. Other test takers, he guessed. One girl who seemed to have green hair, though perhaps this was a trick of the light, the sun shone blindingly bright today, was carelessly flinging her pencil up into the air and catching it again. Not the best idea, Rainy thought. And sure enough, even as he thought it, the girl missed the pencil and watched it fall through the grate at her feet. For a moment, the other girl hesitated as if she might try to help. Then she checked her watch. It was only a few minutes. In only a few minutes, it would be one o'clock. Sorry about your pencil. It's a shame she said, but already her sympathetic expression was fading. Clearly it had occurred to her that with the green-haired girl unable to take the test, there would be less competition. With a spreading smile, she hurried across the plaza and through the front doors of the monk building, which had been finally unlocked. The metal grate covered a storm drain that ran beneath the plaza, and the unfortunate girl was staring through it, down into darkness. When Rainy reached her, her appearance was striking, indeed, even startling. She had coal black skin, her hair so long hair so long she could have tied it around her waist, and yes, it truly was green, and an extraordinarily puffy white dress that gave you the impression she was standing in a cloud. That's rotten luck, Rainy said, to drop your pencil here of all places. The girl looked up at him with hopeful eyes. You don't happen to have an extra one, do you? I'm sorry, I was told to bring. I know, I know, she interrupted. Only one pencil. Well, that was my only pencil. A fat lot of good it will do me down in that drain. She stared wistfully through the grate a moment, then looked up at Rainy as if surprised to see him still standing there. What are you waiting for? The test starts any minute. I'm not going to leave you here without a pencil, Rainy said. I was surprised that your friend did. Friend? Oh, that other girl, she's not my friend. We just met at the bottom of the steps. I didn't even know her name. For that matter, I don't know yours either. Reynold Muldoon, you can call me Rainy. Okay, Rainy, nice to meet you. I'm Rhonda Kazimbi. So now that we're friends and all, how do you intend to get my pencil back? We'd better hurry, you know, one minute late and we're disqualified. Rainy took out his own pencil, a new number two, that he'd sharpened to a fine point that morning. Actually, he said, we'll just share this one. He snapped the pencil in two and handed her the sharpened end. I'll sharpen my half and we'll both be set. Do you have your eraser? Rhonda Kazimbi was staring at her half of the pencil with a mixture of gratitude and surprise. That never would have occurred to me, she said, breaking it like that? Now, what did you say? Oh, oh yes, I have my eraser. Then let's get going. We only have a minute, Rainy urged. Rhonda held back. Hold on, Rainy, I haven't properly thanked you. You're welcome, he said impatiently. Now let's go. Still, she resisted. No, I really want to thank you. If it weren't for you, I couldn't have taken this test. And do you want to know something? Glancing around to be sure they were alone, Rhonda whispered, I have the answers. I'm going to make a perfect score. What? How? No time to explain. But if you sit right behind me, you can look over my shoulder. I'll hold up my test a bit to make it easier. Rainy was stunned. How in the world could this girl have gotten her hands on the answers? And now she was offering to help him cheat? 
he was briefly tempted. He wanted desperately to learn about those special opportunities, but when he imagined returning to tell Miss Perumal of his success, hiding the fact that he'd cheated, he knew he could never do it. No, thank you, he said. I'd rather not. Rhonda Kazimbi looked amazed, and Rainey once again felt the weight of loneliness upon him. If it was unpleasant to feel so different from the other children at Stonetown Orphanage, how much worse was it to be seen as an oddball by a green-haired girl wearing her own professional fog bank, personal fog bank? Okay, suit yourself, Rhonda said as the two of them started for the front doors. I hope you know what you're in for. Rainey was in too much of a hurry to respond. He had no idea what he was in for, of course, but he certainly wanted to find out. Inside the monk building, conspicuously posted signs led them down a series of corridors past a room where a handful of parents waited anxiously and at last into a room crowded with children and desks. Except for the unusual silence, the room was just like any schoolroom, with a chalkboard at the front and a teacher's desk upon which rested a pencil sharpener, a ruler, and a sign that said, no talking. If you are caught talking, it will be assumed you are cheating. Only two seats remained empty, one behind the other. To guarantee he wouldn't be tempted to cheat, Rainey chose to sit in the front. A clock on the wall struck one just as Rhonda Kazimbi dropped into a desk behind him. That was close, she said. There will be no talking, boomed the pencil woman, who entered just then, slamming the door behind her. She strode briskly to the front of the room, carrying a tall stack of papers and a jar of pickles. If any child is caught cheating, then he or she will be executed. The children gasped. I'm sorry, did I say executed? I meant to say escorted. Any child caught cheating will be escorted from the building at once. Now then, are you all relaxed? It is important to be relaxed when taking such an extremely difficult test as this, especially considering how long it is and how very little time you'll have to complete it. In the back of the room, someone groaned in distress. You there, shouted the pencil woman, pointing her finger. Every head in the room swiveled to see who had groaned. It was the same girl who had abandoned Rhonda Kazimbi on the plaza. Oh, mom, what does swivel mean? Swiveled means to like, turn or rotate in your chair. Oh yeah, in kindergarten my teacher said, oh wow, I have got a really noisy class. No, no, not noisy, nosy class. What does that have to do with swiveling? I don't did, know. did she swivel in her chair to tell you guys that? No, we just swiveled around our heads. So oh. Like, behind the carpet. Oh, so you're, the whole class swiveled. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Um, under the savage stare of the pencil woman, the girl's face went pasty pale, like the underbelly of a dead fish. I said no talking, the woman barked. Do you wish to leave now? But I only groaned, the girl protested. The pencil woman frowned. Do you mean to suggest that saying, but I only groaned, doesn't count as talking? The girl, frightened and perplexed, could hardly muster a shake of the head. Very well, let this be a warning to you, to all of you. From this moment on, there will be no talking, period. Now then, are there any questions? Rainey raised his hand. Reynard Modune, you have a question? Rainey held up his broken pencil and made a pencil sharpening motion with the other hand. Very well, you may use the pencil sharpening motion, pencil sharpener on my desk. Rainey hustled forward, sharpened his pencil. He felt all eyes on him as he ground away, checked the tip and ground away again and hurried back to his seat. As he did so, he noticed Rhonda Kazimbi slipping a tiny piece of paper from the sleeve of her cloud dress, the list of test answers. She was taking quite a risk, Rainey thought, but he had no chance to reflect on it further. As the pencil woman now launched into the rest of her speech, 
You shall have one hour to complete the test, she barked, and you must follow these directions exactly. First, write your name on the top of the test. Second, read all the questions and answers carefully. Third, choose the correct by circling the appropriate letter. Fifth, bring the completed test to me. Sixth, return to your seat and wait until the tests have been graded, which, at which time I will announce the names of those who pass. The children were shifting uneasily in their seats. What happened to the fourth step? The pencil woman had skipped from third to fifth. The women, the children looked at one another, not daring to speak. What if the fourth step was important? Rainey was waiting, hoping someone else would raise a hand for a change. When no one did, he timidly raised his own. Yes, Reynard. He pointed to his mouth. Yes, you may speak. What is your question? Excuse me, but what about the fourth step? There is no fourth step, she replied. Any other questions? Utterly baffled now, the children held their tongues. To pass this test, the pencil woman went on, you must correctly answer every question, by which I mean every question. If you skip even one question or answer one incorrectly, you will fail the test. No problem, whispered Rhonda Kazimbi from behind Rainey. The pencil woman's eyes darted to the other to their side of the room. She stared hard at Rainey, whose mouth went dry. Why on earth didn't Rhonda keep her mouth closed? Was she trying to get them in trouble and thrown out? You may begin the test as soon as you receive it, said the pencil woman, turning away at last. And Rainey resisted the urge to sigh with relief. Even a sigh might disqualify him. Besides, what relief he felt didn't last long. The pencil woman had begun handing out the tests. The first child to receive one was a tough looking boy in a baseball cap who eagerly grabbed it, looked at the first question and burst into tears. The girl behind him looked at her test, rubbed her eyes as if they weren't working properly, then looked again. Her head wobbled on her neck. If you begin to feel faint, said the pencil woman moving on to the next child, place your head between your knees and take deep breaths. If you think you may vomit, please come to the front of the room where a trash can will be provided. Down the row she went, distributing the tests. The crying boy had begun flipping through the tests now, and there appeared to be several pages. And with each new page, his sobs grew louder and more desperate. When he reached the end, he began to wail. I'm afraid loud weeping isn't permitted, said the pencil woman. Please leave the room. The boy, greatly relieved, leaped from his desk and raced to the door, followed at once by two other children who hadn't received the test yet, but were terrified now to see it. The pencil woman closed the door. If any others flee the room in panic or dismay, she said sternly, please remember to close the door behind you. Your sobs may disturb the other test takers. She continued handing out the test. Child after child received it with trembling fingers, and child after child, upon looking at the questions, turned pale or red or a subtle shade of green. By the time the pencil woman dropped the pages on his desk, dread was making Rainy's stomach flop like a fish. And there was good reason for that. The questions were impossible. The very first one read, the territories of the Naxxivan, Naxxivan, <laughs> Autonomous Republic and the Nagor, Nagorno, Nagor Nagorno-Karabakh region are distributed, dispute, wow. Disputed by what, two countries? Let's try that again. The territories of the Naxxivan Autonomous Republic and the Nagorno-Karabakh region are disputed by what two countries? A. Bhutan, which under the 1865 Treaty of 
Sinchulu ceded border land to Britain, and Britain, which in exchange for that land provided Bhutan an annual subsidy, was under whose influence Bhutan's monarchy was established in 19... Um, it's a type of a land, a name of a land. I don't know if it's a country or a city or what it is. State, mm -hmm. probably. Which was established in 1907. B. Azerbaijan, whose territory in 1828 was divided between Russia and Persia by the Treaty of Turkmenche and Armenia, a nation founded after the destruction of the Seleucid empire some 2,000 years ago. Likewise, incorporated into Russia by the aforementioned treaty. C. Vanu Vanuatu, which having been administered until its independence by an Anglo-French condominium, retains both French and English as official languages. In addition to Bislama or Bichilama, Bichilama and Portugal, whose explorer Pedro Fernandez de Quiros became in, in 1606 the first European to discover the islands Vanu Atu. Van Atu. Van Atu compromises. It sounds like it's Hawaiian. It does sound like it's Polynesian, huh? But it's an island, so that makes sense. Yep. Although there were two more answers to choose from, Rainey didn't read them. If every question was like this one, he had absolutely no hope of passing. A quick glance at the next few questions did nothing to encourage him. If anything, they got worse. And this was only the first page. All around him, children were shivering, sighing, grinding their teeth, and Rainey felt like joining them. So much for those special opportunities. Back to the orphanage he would go, where no one, not even Miss Perumal, knew what to do with him. It had been a nice idea, but apparently he did not have what it took. Even so, he wasn't ready to leave. He had yet to follow the directions, and because he was determined not to quit until he had at least tried, he proceeded to follow them now. Dutifully, he wrote his name atop the first page. That was the first step. Well, you've accomplished that much, he thought. The second step was to read all the questions and all the answers carefully. Rainey took a deep breath. There were 40 questions in all. Just reading them would take him most of the hour. It didn't help that the pencil woman now sat eating pickles. They were especially crisp ones too, as she watched the children struggle. The second question wanted to know where the common vetch originated and to what family it belonged. Rainey had no idea what a common vetch was and the possible answers offered. I don't even know what a common vetch is. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe. And the possible answers offered no helpful clue. It might be an antelope, a bird, a rodent, or a vine. Rainey went on to the third question, which had to do with subatomic particles and fermions and Indian and an Indian physicist named Satyendranath Bose. The fourth question asked, which church was built by the Emperor Justinian to demonstrate his superiority to the late Theodid Theodric's Ostrogothic successors? On and on the questions went. To his credit, Rainey recognized the names of a few places, a few mathematical principles, and one or two important historical figures, but it wouldn't do him any good. He would be lucky to answer a single question correctly, much less all of them. When he was exactly halfway through the test, he was on question 20 regarding the difference between parataxis and hypotaxis. Rainey heard Rhonda Kazimbi rise from the desk behind him. Was she already finished? Well, of course, she had all the answers, Rainey grimaced in irritation. And as Rhonda stepped forward to turn in her test, the other children gasped in amazement. But the pencil woman seemed not the least bit suspicious. If anything, she was absorbed in Rhonda's bizarre appearance and could hardly, and hardly glanced at the test as she took it. Rainey had a sudden insight. 
Rhonda was calling an attention to herself on purpose. It was a trick. No one would ever suspect her of cheating because who in her right mind would make such a spectacle of herself if she intended to cheat? The green hair, it must be a wig. The poofy dress, the whispering, they were all meant to distract. Most people would assume that if a child intended to cheat, then surely she would call as little attention to herself as possible. Would I think be, I, I have, a, I think I know why she's drawing attention to herself. Because she's already a part of the mysterious society and she's trying to draw attention to herself to distract the other test takers. Maybe, we'll find out, huh? Yeah, we'll um, would be as quiet as a mouse and as plain as wallpaper. Rainy had to hand it to Rhonda. She might not be smart enough to pass the test, but she was clever enough to get away with cheating on it. He felt a pang of jealousy. Now Rhonda would move on to experience those special opportunities while Rainy would mope his way back to the orphanage defeated. As Rhonda passed by him on the way to, the, to her desk, she winked and let fall a tiny slip of paper. It drifted down like a feather and set it, settled lightly upon Rainy's desk. The test answers. Rainy peeked over at the pencil woman, but she hadn't noticed. She was busy grading Rhonda's test now, making check mark after check mark and nodding her head. So the answers were indeed the right ones, and here they sat on his desk. If he'd felt tempted before, when he had no idea how hard the test would be, that temptation was nothing compared to now. No matter that he'd resisted, no matter that he'd chosen his seat precisely to avoid this situation, here he was, staring at a slip of paper that contained the key to his hopes. All that he had to do was turn it over and look at the answers. The other children were too busy sniffling and biting their fingernails to notice, and if he hurried, he might even copy the answers down before the pencil woman looked up again. She had finished grading Rhonda's paper and was concentrating on the nearly empty jar of pickles, trying to finish out the last one. Rainy star started a long moment. Wow. Rainy stared a long moment at the paper, sorely tempted. Then he reached out and flickered it from his desk onto the floor. What good would those opportunities do him if he wasn't qualified to be given them? And where was the pleasure in cheating? If he couldn't pass fairly, he didn't want to pass. Rainey has integrity, huh? Mm -hmm. He thought That's that integrity. doing the right thing even when nobody is looking. Oh, in an episode of Jesse, um, they went to a renaissance a renaissance yeah renaissance fair with bertram the butler and someone there when nobody else was there kept saying halt and kept talking normal then went whatever the word was back to go back to talking there and then he yelled halt, halt again and then um one of the persons from uh from who jesse is nannying um said what was it again? Um, why do you keep saying halt? There's nobody else here. And then the guy said, what's the good in the world if you only do them when people are looking? And then the, um, Luke said, you are so not like me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So the butler had integrity and No, Luke... the per, the per, another person who was at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, they had integrity, but the Luke character did not? Luke is one of the person that Jesse knew. Who says that he's going to break the rules when no one's looking. Yeah, yeah, also, he's kind of very dumb. So that is not integrity. Yeah. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, where were we? She had finished grading Rhonda's paper and was concentrating on the nearly empty jar of pickles, trying to finish the last one out. Oh, wait, we're down here. Um, if he couldn't pass fairly, he didn't want to pass. He thought this and mostly believed it and felt his spirits boosted by the decision. But even so, a few seconds passed before he could tear his eyes from the paper on the floor. All right, he told himself, returning to the test. Get a move on, Rainy, and don't look back. There's no time to waste. Indeed, 
There wasn't. A glance at the wall clock confirmed. Less than half an hour remained, and Rainey had more than half the test yet to read. He finished reading about parataxis and hypotaxis. They either had something to do with writing or else with futuristic transportation, but he couldn't decide which, and moved on to question 21, which read, after the fall of the Russian Empire, when a failed attempt to create a trans-Caucasian Republic with Georgia and Armenia led to the creation of the country Azerbaijan, which currently disputes with Armenia the territories of the Naxivan Autonomous Republic and the Nagorno-Karabakh region. From what key powers did Azerbaijan... Rainey stopped. Something about the question seemed awfully familiar. So familiar that he felt pressed to think about it. Hadn't he seen those names before? Flipping back to the beginning of the test, Rainey read the very first questions again. The territories of the Naxivan Autonomous Republic and the Nagorno-Karabakh region are distributed, disputed by which two countries? Oh, Mom, what does disputed mean? Disputed means like you're fighting uh -huh. or, or having a disagreement. Um, or with countries of war? Um, so it could be a war, but a dispute is usually like a, a disagreement. It's smaller than a war, way smaller. Um, let's see. He blinked, hardly believing his eyes. Armenia and Azerbaijan. The answer to the question one lay in, qu hidden in question 21. This wasn't a test of knowledge at all. It was a puzzle. Rainey looked at question two, which began, despite having originated in Europe, the vine known as the common vetch, a member of the pea family is widely, there it was, the answer to question two. With so a vetch is a vine. A vetch is a, a pea vine, yep. A pea vine. With I didn't know vine, peas grew on vines. Yeah, they do. We'll have to look it up so you can see a picture. And when we plant them, you'll be able to see them. Oh, we're going to plant peas? We have pea seeds, yep. Nice. We just have to get some cereal and then we can get it planted. Um, let's see. We already have some. With mounting excitement, Rainy read the next one, and sure enough, although the question itself made no mention of some atomic subatomic particles or Indian physicists, there was a long discussion of them in the answer D. Not only were all the answers buried in the test, he realized they were listed in order. Number one's answer was found in number 21 and vice versa. And number two's answer was found in number 22 and so on, all the way up to number 40, which cleared up the mystery of parataxis and hypotaxis raised in question 20. Rainey was so delighted, he nearly leaped from his desk and cheered. Still, he couldn't spare even a moment to congratulate himself. Time was running short. Eagerly, he set to the task of finding the correct answers. This took a good while as it was necessary to flip back and forth between the pages and read a great deal of text. And in the end, it took Rainey almost exactly one hour to finish the test. He had only just circled the last answer, placed his test on the pencil woman's desk, and looked around at the other children. Some were ferociously circling numbers at random, hoping to get lucky, and some were not to be seen at all, having crept out of the room in bleak despair. When the woman, pencil woman shouted, Pencils! Time's up, children! Lay down your pencils, please! After a certain, certain amount of blubbering and wiping away tears, the children stacked their tests on top of Rainey's and returned to their seats. In exhausted silence, they waited as the pencil woman flipped through the test. This took but a minute. She had only to look at the first question after all. Then it came to Rainey's at the bottom of the stack. She ran through the pages, making check marks and nodding. Nice work, Rhonda whispered from behind him. You managed it on your own. She seemed genuinely pleased that he hadn't cheated, despite having encouraged him to do just that. She certainly was a strange one. I shall now call the names of those who passed the test, announced the pencil woman. If your name is called, you will advance to the third stage of testing. So please remain seated and await further instructions. 